one other person who gives meds? She does uh, counseling as well. She does psychiatric services. So yes, she does do counseling. And yes, she has the authority to prescribe medication. So if we, 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 she's not hired primarily to give meds. She's hired primarily to handle mental health crisis issues and and do some work and counseling and so forth, which mm -hmm. I assume is a fairly important thing in a facility like a jail. Mm -hmm. Is that not true? Yeah, you deal with uh, dual diagnosis people, uh, meaning that they have not only a mental health issue, but they also do uh, substance abuse problems as well. Um, deal with a lot of people that are running, that deal with, that have mental health issues. Yes. How significant do you feel this position is? I, well, she does, um, if we have people on 15 minute checks because they're suicidal, uh, she's able to clear them when she comes in for her next day. Um, we had seen a reduction in overtime uses because of the 24 hour or 101 observation um, because she's able to assess them and you know, prescribe the medication to stabilize the individual. Thank you. <coughs> yes, sir. Yes, thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, 10 hours a day, four days a week, is that what you said? Yes, sir. Who takes care of all of her duties on that fifth day and sixth day and seventh day? If there's an emergency, we call her. Just like me, if, if there's an emergency at the jail, they call me. So we call her if there's a crisis that she has to come they in. They call you, but you, who, who is there that can prescribe medication? She'll do it over the phone. If she has to come in to do the evaluation, she'll come in and do an evaluation. Um, so we're covered as far as if where she's not working on Mondays. She doesn't work on Mondays. So if we have a crisis that happens, the medical staff will call her, and if need be, she'll come in to do the evaluation and then prescribe whatever it needs to be prescribed. Is she, I have a question. Is it, if she comes in, is it an hour or three hours that we pay her? Is there a she's, policy? She's salary. Yeah. She's salary, so, okay. Salary, so, but it's not yet. Yes, but that's well, that was a question. I, I, we overlooked that in our discussion with Jason. If she came in next year, whether it was more money more than she was on salary. Okay. okay. I would like very much to move on seeing if we can end it in the day. Yes, but you can call them. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, <clears throat> I have a, just a couple I don't know, questions I, I, I may have alluded to, but um, and, and things that I mentioned before in the past. Uh, I was able through the annual report to get the 2008 census and the 2009 census, and we were given the 2010 census. But uh, as part of the information I would like to see is also uh, an additional three years, 2007, 2006, 2005 prisoner day census. Um, and the reason is, is because something that I have mentioned in the past and have received a lot of pushback, I suppose, from jail staff, and perhaps for good reason, is uh, the idea of housing federal prisoners. Um, from my experience on the delegation and on the subcommittee for the jail, uh, Superintendent uh, Robinson stated that basically the jail could run with a certain staff level and that that staff level could handle its capacity. And it didn't matter if there were less people in there or more people in there. But there was a certain amount of staffing that was necessary. And what seems to be trending is the fact that we are losing our census, but we can't cut back on staff to make up for that census. Okay? So the reasonable solution is to increase your census. And we could do that by, by arresting more people, which may not be really a, a what we're looking for, but perhaps by housing federal prisoners, as which I do, I believe they do that in Sullivan County, I believe it's a county. <coughs> they used to do it in Stratford County until the feds pulled the rug out from underneath them. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's what I'm saying. Okay, so I mean that is, and that is the reason why I'm interested in this, because we're talking about these, this house bill that's going to put more prisoners on the bracelets. 
but what's going to happen is, is that we're going to have less people in the jail, but we're still going to have the same amount of staffing in the jail. So we really haven't solved our problem with the amount of expense that we have from spending in the jail. So we need to maybe perhaps look at increasing the revenues if they can't find ways to decrease their expenses. Okay. Um, secondly, and, and almost as importantly, or maybe more importantly, is that, you know, perhaps, Madam Chair, I'm reading this wrong, but I believe the adopted budget, adopted budget, that's the 2010 budget. Right. That's, mm -hmm. And if I look at the actual dollars spent in 2010 in the jail, it's more than we adopted for our budget. Mm -hmm. So they spent more than we allowed them to. And that was part, I would assume, that the commissioners, well, the adopted budget was 3162, and the actual dollars was 3171. Yeah. Now, did we, um, did you do a, you know, an approval? Because you haven't asked us for those, for those approvals. So, Commissioners, is something you need to look at there. And, and also, I just want to, if I may, mm -hmm. reiterate that this is the, the second time that the jail has overspent the budget in, within the past, I believe if it wasn't last budget cycle, it was the one before that. Within the past three years, it's happened twice in the jail system. Yes, it, absolutely. I can recall it vividly. I may be getting older, but I'm not quite that old yet. Uh, it may have been, ooh, actually, uh, was, I think, I mean, was when, um, it was before uh, Commissioner Albee came into office. That year, right when he came in, that year, I believe, it was also overspent when Marge Webster was still commissioner before. Yeah. That's my recollection, so you can figure that year out. Was that 2007 then, it must have been, because you came on, you elected in 2008. Right, so yeah, so the, the, so the fiscal year of 2008 would be the year that it was overspent again. Okay, Commissioner Sons. We have a person that needs a hot operation, costs a lot of money, um, and $10,000 over could be um, charged to or to that particular inmate that had the operation. We don't know when people come in as to what they're going to need, what it's going to cost us for their medical supplies. I mean, at one time, we had uh, an AIDS person in, and that cost us $2,000 a month just for a, a and medication, so. Normal, and normally what you do is that as you're coming closer to audit and closing the books, you come to us with a list of how you want to switch money from you as commissioners asked to switch within departments, and I don't, think that you have done that yet. No, we have and not. so that is they that is a way that the commissioners can take care of what goes on as long as that bottom line they don't go over. Um, not on per department but overall expenses. So would you look at that and figure out what you're gonna do with Representative McConkey. Madam Chairman, if I'm if I'm not too far off here, it's my understanding that we have arrangements with some of the other counties to take some of their prisoners from time to time. <laughs> and it's my understanding that we take female prisoners from Coas County. Um, are we being are we being reimbursed for that? And are we, if we're not being reimbursed for that, are we making sure that we're sharing our people with them so that we're at least breaking even with that? We do. We ship people around the state. As a matter of fact, I have uh, nine people out on transfer right now. Um, so there is, there is, um, you know, we don't bill co us time for their females. Um, but when we do segregation, they don't bill us for when we send people up to them. Or neither does any of the other superintendents right now. The only cost that they're encouraged is their medical costs. Thank we you. incur their medical costs? And then we get, if we're holding the Coas County inmate, then they reimburse their medical costs. Okay, so, oh, okay, so Coas County would take care of the, Correct. the medical costs from, okay, Representative County. So if, um, is, are there any numbers on Coas? Did they ship us 10 and we've shipped them back 10? Is, is that pretty much the arrangement right here? <coughs> I don't take taking more of theirs. I don't have that information. I, I could honestly tell you that we um, we take more of their females than we ship up to them. Yes. Thank 
I'd like to answer um, Representative Alderman's question. The information that we got, 120110, showed us under budget in the jail. Not until we got this blue one, which is the final one, did we know that we're over 10,000. Okay, we got this today, or he did. Yes, and I think that what happens is that when you get the final numbers, that's when you come to us. You used to just transfer it and then come and tell us that you've done it. When we got agitated enough about it, you do come before us and ask us for our vote, so you undoubtedly will do that soon because now you're pushing up. We'll do it next week. I think it's up. <laughs> yes, go ahead. Representative Algren. Uh, yeah, just one more question. Um, has there been any inquiry or is there a possibility for us to house for reimbursement um, s uh, state prison prisoners? Well, I can tell you dealing with uh, Superintendent O'Mara, uh, in, talk in talking with him, any sentence that um, is a consecutive one year sentence that served in the House of Corrections. The second year, um, the state has the authority to take custody of them and house them in the state prison system, or they can reimburse the counties for those services. Since that bill has been introduced and passed, he's continuously built the state prison system, and he hasn't received a dime from the state. So I don't know as if, um, if that would be uh, beneficial. I can tell you that uh, after our subcommittee meeting uh, two weeks ago, we met with uh, Jamie Berry, a liaison from the U.S. Marshals, to <coughs> look at possibly housing federal inmates. If we were to bring in up to two or three, we could generate somewhere about $100,000 revenue. What strings are attached when we house federal? Well, it depends on the size of What's that, him? Are there strings that are attached when What's we house? Cost? Hmm? What's the cost? It would be our cost and they would reimburse us. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and they actually set the rate per day that they would pay us. We have to guarantee those cells. We have, yeah, we have to contract for a number so of many cells, cells, so many beds, yeah. yeah. Okay, so that's that, so that is the, whether or not they guarantee them whether they are filled or not. I would just like to know the, the strings attached to federal, because um, I know that Stratford was counting on federal. There was a complaint or a lawsuit that a New Hampshire inmate brought of uh, sexual harassment, and all the federal in inmates were taken out immediately. Mm -hmm. And that was the cost of their jail, along with an awful lot of um, operating costs, so that they got stung. So, mm -hmm. not that we are doing sexual harassment to our inmates. I don't believe that, but we have to be careful that of what we do when we do with federal. And if this if this is to move forward, um, I would like to start off uh, as a pilot program, do one, two, maybe three, um, and see how that helps us. Um, and this this is the first time the commissioners are hearing this, so okay. um, I need to review the packet and then present it to them for their input and their approval, yes. and then it can be presented to okay. you. And I would like to have a lot of discussion between you, the commissioner, subcommittee, and the whole delegation before we go, uh -huh. just to see what we can do with federal. Mm -hmm. Okay, one more question, and then we're off of jail. Representative McCarthy. Thank you, Madam Chairman. I, I, I'm confused with this, not only with the jail, but um, much more so with the sheriff's department. And that is that nowhere do I see on here the revenue. Um, I know, in the final, yeah, in here it is. So it's not on here. So it, it, the jail took in revenue of $37,000 this year. Um, so if you take that $37,000 off that number, we're actually at 134 with the, the jail is uh, twenty five to $30,000 under budget. So it's confusing um, when you don't see, I mean, they budgeted for it, they get the money, but it doesn't show it on here until you get to this final paper that there is that there is revenue. It becomes very confusing. And, and when we're talking the, the